Hi guys, let's start part 3 of chapter 1. The making of Germany and Italy. 4.1 Germany. Can the army be the architect of a nation? After 1848, nationalism in Europe moved away from its association with democracy and revolution. Nationalist sentiments were often mobilized by conservatives for promoting state power and achieving political domination over Europe. This can be observed in the process by which Germany and Italy came to be unified as nation states. As you have seen, nationalist feelings were widespread among middle class Germans, who in 1848 tried to unite the different reasons of German confederation under a national state. Okay, um, who in 1848 tried to unite the different reasons of the German confederation into a nation state governed by an elected parliament. This liberal initiative to nation building was however repressed by the combined forces of the monarchy and the military supported by the large land owners called junkers of prussia so the liberals initiative of nation building was however repressed by the combined forces of the monarch and military supported by the large land owners called junkers of prussia from then on prussia took on the leadership of the movement for national unification its chief minister otto von wismark was the architect of this process so who was the architect its chief minister otto von wismark was the architect of this process carried out with the help of the prussian army and bureaucracy three wars over seven years so three wars over seven years with Austria, Denmark and France ended in Prussian victory. So Prussia won and completed the process of unification. In January 1871, the Prussian king William I was proclaimed German emperor in a ceremony held at Versailles. On the bitter cold morning of 18 January 1871, on the bitterly, on the bitterly cold morning of 18 January 1871, and assembly uprising, the princes of the German states, representatives of the army, different Prussian ministers including the chief minister Otto von Bismarck gathered in the unheated hall of mirrors in the palace of Versailles to proclaim the new German empire headed by Kaiser William I of Prussia. So, on the bitterly cold morning of 18 January 1871, 18 January 1871, and assembly comprising, so, and assembly comprising the princes of the German states, representatives of the army, Important Prussian ministers, including the chief minister Otto von Bismarck, gathered in the unheated Hall of Mirrors in the Palace of Versailles to proclaim the new German Empire headed by Kaiser William I of Prussia. Uh, the nation-building process in Germany had demonstrated the dominance of Prussian state power.
The new state placed a strong emphasis on modernizing the currency, banking, legal and judicial systems in Germany. Prussian measures and practices often became a model for the rest of Germany. Figure 11. So, here is a figure. Figure 11. The proclamation of the German Empire in the whole of mirrors at Versailles. Anton von Werner. At the center stands the Kaiser and the chief commander of the Prussian army, General von Roon. Near them is Bismarck. This monumental work was completed and presented by the artist to Bismarck on the latest 70th birthday in 1885. Here's a figure. Figure 12. Unification of Germany, 1866-71. So it's being color-coded. We have 4.2. Italy unified. Like Germany, Italy too had a long history of political fragmentation. Italians were scattered over several dynastic states as well as the multinational Habsburg Empire. So like Germany, Italy too had a long history of political fragmentation. Italians were scattered over several dynastic states as well as the multinational Habsburg Empire. During the middle of the 19th century, Italy was divided into seven states, of which only one, Sardinia Piedmont, was ruled by an Italian princely house. The north was under Austrian Habsburgs, the center was ruled by the Pope, and the southern regions were under the domination of the Bourbon kings of Spain. Even the Italian language had not acquired one common form and still had many regional and local variations. Figure 13 Caricature of Otto von Bismarck in the German Reichstag, that is the Parliament, from Figaro, Vienna, 5th March 1870. During the 1830s, Giuseppe Margini had sought to put together a coherent program for a unitary Italian Republic. He had also formed a sacred society. So Margini also formed a sacred society called Young Italy for the dissemination of his goals. The failure of revolutionary uprising both in 1831 and 1848 meant that the mantle now fell on Sardinia Piedmont under its ruler King Victor Emmanuel II to unify the Italian states through war. In the eyes of the ruling elites of this region, a unified Italy offered them the possibility of economic development and political dominance. So it offered them the possibility of economic development and political dominance. Chief Minister Kevur, okay, so the Chief Minister was Kevur, who led the movement to unify the reasons of Italy. So he led the movement to unify the reasons of Italy, was neither a revolutionary nor a democrat. Like many other wealthy and educated members of Italian elite, he spoke French much better than he did Italian. Through a tactful diplomatic alliance with France engineered okay, through a tactful diplomatic alliance with France, engineered by Kevor, in uh, Sardinia 
Piedmont succeeded in defeating the Austrian forces in 1859. Apart from regular troops, a large number of armed volunteers under the leadership of Giuseppe Garibaldi joined the fray. In 1860, they marched into South Italy, so they marched into South Italy and the Kingdom of the Two Sicilies. So, in 1860, what happened? In, in 1860, they marched into South Italy and the Kingdom of the Two Sicilies and succeeded in winning the support of the local peasants in order to drive out the Spanish rulers. In 1861, Victor Emmanuel II. So in 1861, Victor Emmanuel II was proclaimed King of United Italy. However, much of the Italian population, among whom rates of illiteracy were very high, remained blissfully unaware of liberal nationalist ideology. The peasant masses who had supported Garibaldi in southern Italy had never heard of Italia and believed that La Dalia was Victor Emmanuel's wife. Okay, so the peasant masses who had supported Garibaldi in southern Italy had never heard of Italia. And they believed that La Talia was Victor Emmanuel's wife. And uh, here's a map. Figure 14a. Italian states before unification in 1858. So, this is before the unification. Different states are there. And here, this figure 14b, Italy after unification. The map shows the year in which different reasons seen in figure 14a become part of a unified Italy. So, the dates are given on which year they became a part of Italy. 4.3. The Strange Case of Britain The model of the nation or the nation state, some scholars have argued, is Great Britain. The model of the nation or the nation state, some scholars have argued, is Great Britain. In Britain, the formation of the nation state was not the result of of a sudden upheaval or revolution. It was the result of a long drawn out process. There was no British nation prior to the 18th century. The primary identities of the people who inhabited the British Isles were ethnic ones. The primary identities of the people who inhabited the British Isles were ethnic ones, such as English, Welsh, Scot, or Irish. All of these ethnic groups had their own cultural and political traditions. But as the English nation steadily grew in wealth, importance and power, it was able to extend its influence over the other nations of the islands. The English parliament which had seized power from the monarchy in 1688. So the English parliament had seized power from the monarchy in 1688 at the end of a protracted conflict was the instrument through which a nation state with England at its center came to be forged. So the English parliament which had seized power from the monarchy in 1688 at the end of a protracted conflict was the instrument through which a nation state with England at its center came to be forged. The Act of Union, so there's an act, the Act of Union 1707 between England and Scotland that resulted in the formation of the 
United Kingdom of Great Britain meant in effect that England was able to impose its influence on Scotland. The British Parliament was henceforth dominated by its English members. The growth of a British identity meant that Scotland's distinctive culture and political institutions were systematically suppressed. The Catholic lands that inhabited the Scottish Highlands suffered terrible repression whenever they attempted to assert their independence. The Scottish Highlanders were forbidden to speak their Gaelic language so they were forbidden even to speak so they were forbidden to speak their Gaelic language or wear their traditional dress and large numbers were forcibly driven out of their homeland. Ireland suffered a similar faith. It was a country deeply divided between Catholics and Protestants. The English helped the Protestants of Ireland. So the English helped the Protestants of Ireland to establish their dominance over a largely Catholic country. Catholic revolts against British dominance were suppressed. After a failed revolt, Laid by Wolf Tone and his United Irishmen. 1798. Ireland was forcibly incorporated into the United Kingdom in 1801. So, after a failed revolt led by Wolf Tone and his United Irishmen, 1798, Ireland was forcibly incorporated into the united kingdom in 1801 a new british nation was forged through the propagation of a dominant english culture the symbols of the new britain the british flag that is the union jack the national anthem that is god save our noble king the English language were actively promoted and the older nations survived only as subordinate partners in this union. So, the symbols of the New Britain, like the British flag, like the national anthem, like the English language, were actively promoted and the older nations survived only as subordinate partners in this union. Here is a box, box 2. Giuseppe Garibaldi, 1707-82, is perhaps the most celebrated of Italian freedom fighters. He came from a family engaged in the coastal trade and was a sailor in the merchant navy. In 1833, he met Margini, joined the Young Italy movement and participated in a republican uprising in Piedmont in 1834. The uprising was suppressed and Garibaldi had to flee to South America, where he lived in exile till 1848. In 1854, he supported Victor Emmanuel II in his efforts to unify the Italian states. In 1860, Garibaldi led the famous expedition of the Thousand to South Italy. Fresh volunteers kept joining through the course of the campaign till their numbers grew to about 30,000. They were known as, they were popularly known as red shirts. So they were popularly known as red shirts. In 1867, Garibaldi led an army of volunteers to Rome to fight the last obstacle of the unification of Italy, the Papal States, where a French garrison was stationed. 
In 1867, Garibaldi led an army of volunteers to Rome to fight the last obstacle to the unification of Italy, that is the Papal States. So, it's the Papal States where a French garrison was stationed. The red shirts proved to be no match for the combined French and Papal troops. It was only in 1870 when, during the war with Prussia, France withdrew France withdrew its troops from Rome that the Papal States were finally joined to Italy. So it was only in 1870 when during the war with Prussia, France withdrew its troops from Rome that the Papal States were finally joined to Italy. So now the Papal States was able to join to Italy. Figure 15. Garibaldi helping King Victor Emmanuel II of Sardinia, Piedmont to pull on the boot named Italy. English caricature of 1859. Here's an English word, ethnic. It relates to a common racial, tribal, or cultural origin or background that a community identifies with or claims. So what is this ethnic? Ethnic, it relates to a common racial or a common tribal or a common cult cultural origin or a common background that a community identifies with or claims. Uh, 5. Visualizing the nation. While it is easy enough to represent a ruler through a portrait or a statue, how does one go about giving a face to a nation? Artists in the 18th and 19th centuries found a way out by personifying a nation. So they personified a nation. In other words, they represented a country as if it were a person. So what they did was that they represented a country as if it was a person. Nations were then portrayed as female figures. Okay, For the nations, they chose a female figure to portray it. The female form that was chosen to personify the nation did not stand for any particular women in real life. So it does not personify or it does not stand for any particular women in real life. Rather, it sought to give the abstract idea of the nation a concrete form. So what it did is that it gave a concrete form to the abstract idea of the nation. That is, the female figure became an allegory of the nation. So the female figure became an allegory of the nation. So we have here a figure, figure 16, postage stamps of 1850 with the figure of Marianne representing the Republic of France. So this figure of Marianne, it represents the Republic of France. You will recall that during the French Revolution, artists used the female allegory to portray ideas such as liberty, justice, and the republic. So, during the French Revolution, female figures were also used to personify the idea of liberty, of justice, and of republic. These ideals were represented through specific objects or symbols. So these ideals were represented through specific objects or symbols. As you would remember, the attributes of liberty are the red cap. So the uh, re liberty was represented by red cap or the broken chain, while justice is generally a blindfolded woman carrying a pair of weighing glasses. I think in India too, the justice is being represented by blindfolded women carrying a pair of weighing glasses. Similar female Allegories were invented by artists in the 19th century to represent the nation. So many 
artist. They started using female allegory to represent a nation. The France, okay, in France, she was christened Marianne. So she was given a name in France. She was given a name, which is Marianne, a popular Christian name. So in France, she was christened Marianne, a popular Christian name, which underlined the idea of a people's, people's nation. So it underlined the idea of a people's nation. Her characteristics were drawn from those of liberty and the republic. The red cape, the tricolor, the coquette. Okay, so these were used in order to draw her characteristics. Statues of Marianne were erected in public squares to remind the people or to remind the public of the national symbol of unity and to persuade them to identify with it. Marianne images were marked on coins and stamps. Similarly, so, just like that in other countries or in other places like Germany. So, Germania became the allegory of the German nation. So, she was named as Germania, became the allegory of the German nation. In visual representations, Germania wears the crown of oak leaves as the german oak stands for heroism so german oak stands for heroism so she wears a crown of oak leaves so here's a new word so here's the meaning of allegory when an abstract idea for instance greed envy freedom liberty is expressed through a person or a thing and allegorical story has two meanings one literal and one symbolic so and allegory story has two meanings the first one is the literal one and the second is the symbolic one so what is this allegory it is when an abstract idea like the liberty justice freedom so ev like this the abstract ideas is expressed through a person or a thing so this is what we call this allegory here we have a figure Figure 17, Germania, Philip Veit, 1848. The artist prepared this painting of Germania on a cotton banner, as it was meant to hang from the ceiling of the church of St. Paul, where the Frankfurt Parliament was convened in March 1848. So we have meanings of the symbols. Attribute significance first one is broken chains it means being freed breastplate with eagle it's the symbol of the german empire and it means strength crown of oak leaves it means heroism sword it means readiness to fight olive branch around the sword Willingness to make peace. Black, red and gold tricolor. It means flag of the liberal nationalist in 1848. Banned by the dukes of the German states. The next is rays of the rising sun. Beginning of a new era. Okay, here's a figure. And here's another figure. Figure 18. The Fallen Germania. Julius Hupner, 1850. Or Julius Hupner, so 1850. And then we have another figure here. Figure 19. Germania guarding the Rhine. In 1860, the artist Lorenz Klassen was commissioned to paint this image. The inscription on Germania's sword reads, The German sword protects the German Rhine. 
So let's come to nationalism and imperialism. By the last quarter of the 19th century, nationalism no longer retained its idealistic, liberal, democratic sentiment of the first half of the century, but became a narrow creed with limited ends. During this period, nationalist groups became increasingly intolerant of each other and even ready to go to war. The major European powers in turn manipulated the nationalist aspirations of the subject peoples in Europe to further their own imperialist aims. The most serious source of nationalist tensions in Europe after 1871 was the area called the Balkans. So there emerged a serious source of nationalist tension in Balkans. The Balkans was a region of geographical and ethnic variation comprising modern-day Romania, Bulgaria, Albania, Greece, Macedonia, Croatia, Bosnia-Herzegovina, Slovenia, Serbia, and Montenegro whose inhabitants were broadly known as the slaves. A large part of the Balkans was under the control of the Ottoman Empire. So, a large part of the Balkans was under the rule of the Ottoman Empire. The spread of the ideas of romantic nationalism in the Balkans together with the disintegration of the Ottoman Empire made this reason very explosive. So there are two reasons for making this Balkan reason very, very explosive or very rioting place. So the first one is the spread of the ideas, the spread of So the first one is the spread of the ideas of romantic nationalism in the Balkans. And the next one is the disintegration. So the next is the disintegration of the Ottoman Empire. Made this reason very explosive. All through the 19th century, the Ottoman Empire had sought to strengthen itself through modernization and internal reforms, but with very little, little success. One by one, its European subject nationalities broke away from its control. So it broke away from its control and declared independence. The Balkan peoples based their claims for independence on political rights on nationality and used history to prove that they had once been independent but had subsequently been subjugated by foreign powers hence the rebellion okay hence the rebellious nationalities in the balkans thought of their struggles as attempts to win back their long lost independence as the different Slavic nationalities struggled to define their identity and independence the balkan area became an area of intense conflict so they were struggling to define their identity and independence. The Balkan area became an area of intense conflict. The Balkan states were fiercely jealous of each other and each hoped to gain more territory at the expense of the others. So uh, what the Balkan states thought was that they were fiercely jealous so they were jealous of each other and each hoped to gain more territories at the expense of the others matters were further complicated because the balkans also became the scene of big power rivalry so it again further complicated things because balkans also became the scene of big power rivalry during this period, there was intense rivalry among the European powers over trade and colonies as well as naval and military might. So there was rivalry 
between European powers over trade and colonies as well as naval and military might. These rivalries were very evident in the way the Balkan problem unfolded. Each power like Russia, Germany, England, Austro-Hungary was keen on countering the hold of other powers over the Balkans and extending its power, its own control over the sea. So what was happening is that each power like Russia, Germany, England, Austro-Hungary was keen. So they were keen on countering the hold of other powers over the Balkans. So they, they don't want other powers to control Balkans and they want to extend their own control over the Balkan region. This led to a series of wars in the region and finally the First World War. So finally the First World War took place place. Here's a figure. Figure 20, a map celebrating the British Empire. At the top, okay, at the top we have got angels. At the top, angels are shown carrying the banner of freedom. In the foreground, Britannia, the symbol of the British nation. So, for Britannia, she is named as Britannia okay so in the foreground Britannia the symbol of the British nation is triumphantly sitting over the globe the colonies are represented through images of tigers elephants forest and primitive people the domination of the world is shown as the basis of Britain's national pride Nationalism aligned with imperialism led Europe to disaster in 1914. But we, meanwhile, many countries in the world which had been colonized by the European powers in the 19th century began to oppose imperial domination. So the colonies, they imposed imperial domination. The anti-imperial movements that developed everywhere were nationalist in the sense that they all struggled to form independent nation states and were inspired by a sense of collective national unity forged in confrontation with imperialism. So what was happening is that the anti uh, the anti imperial movement that developed everywhere were nationalist. So they were nationalist in the idea. Or in the sense they were feeling a sense of nationalism. In the sense that they all struggled to form independent nation states. So they want to form independent nation states and were inspired by a sense of collective national unity forged in confrontation with imperialism. So as they fight the imperialist masters as a united front, so they developed a sense of nationalism. European ideas of nationalism were nowhere replicated for people everywhere developed so they developed their own specific variety of nationalism but the idea that societies should be organized into nation states came to be accepted as natural and universal so the idea that nation states so the idea that societies should be organized into nation states came to be accepted as natural and universal. So that's all guys. See you in my next video. Bye.